Yo, yo, what's up guys? Good morning, hope everyone is doing well today. It is Wednesday, March 18th. Ooh, man, I didn't get enough sleep last night. I watched that movie, uh, Uncut Gems. Great movie, great movie. Uh, with Adam Sandler, really good movie. If anybody hasn't seen it, good movie. Market is falling down today. Unfortunately, but the market is falling down today. Look at the spy down to 237s. That's and P 500 is going to drop when it opens up today. 100%. Um, and so yeah, this is the S and P. This is the this is the little mini S and P. This is the spy. But we're down today, guys. Let me see what the low of the last few weeks are. The low of the last few weeks is 237.07. So we're not far away from the low of the last few years. The low of the last few years, guys, just to put this in perspective. This is the new low of the last few years. Or no, the last two and a half years. Really. Since 2018, actually. Let me, let me, let me rephrase that. Uh, since 2018, this is the low. Can you guys hear me? Probably not, right? Like Uncut Gems, huh? It's a good movie, man. It's a good movie. Listen, I I bet on sports sometimes, but I'm not like that, man. I was telling my wife, it's like, look, dude, I bet on sports sometimes just to make the like I watch UFC fights and I bet on the fighters to make them more entertaining, right? But I'm not betting huge sums of money here. I might bet like 20 bucks, you know, on a fight. You know, at the end of the day, I might lose like 60, 70 dollars. I might make a little, I might make 60, 70 dollars. It ain't the end of the world if I lose. Right? I'm not betting thousands, hundreds, anything like that. Man. And I couldn't imagine doing that. That would stress me out all the time. Um, really, I've just been watching MMA and, and football for so long that... Honestly, I, I'll watch football. I don't need football more exciting. I, I get way too serious about football. But it just makes the fights more entertaining when I bet on it. But a good movie. Uh, I, lo I love the ending. Um, just because... I love the ending. Yeah. Music too low? What? <laughs> All right, hold on, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to it myself. See what the best best uh, level is. So give me one second. Alright guys, that should work. Let me know what the volume's like now. I turned it down. Let me know if that works.
Oh, there we go, man. Uh, all right, I'm back. I've been talking to myself. I, that, that's me. I forgot to unmute myself. Let me know how the music is, though, now. Somebody asking me who I have, who do I think is going to win versus Habib and Ferguson. And, and my heart's telling me Habib, but my mind is telling me Ferguson. No, wait. Reverse that, actually. My heart is telling me Ferguson, but my mind's telling me Habib because Habib's a monster, man. And he it's actually pronounced Habib. It's He's a monster. I don't think anybody's going to beat him until he retires. And I think he's going to make everybody that doubted him look stupid. As much as I want Ferguson to win, I like Ferguson. I want the American guy to win, you know. But in the end, I think Habib is just on a different level than everybody else. I don't think he's actually looked vulnerable in any UFC fight he's been in. And I think Habib's just going to run through Ferguson. Uh, we'll see, though. You know, we'll see. Uh, Ferguson has a chance, specifically with, like, anaconda chokes and, and submissions from the ground. Uh, in that regard, Ferguson has a chance, but I think Habib's just going to be able to take Ferguson down at will. Uh, yeah, Ferguson was a good wrestler, but I do think Habib's just going to be able to take him down at will, and I think more so the fight is going to be fought on the ground, and, you know, I think if, if Ferguson's going to win, I think he's going to do it by submission on the ground. All right. John talking to himself equals a good day in the market. Yes, sir, Rel. You know. You know. Uh, Mitch will be here. What's up, JB? Um, Mitch will be here. He's here a little bit later. All right. What's, what's, what's the volume like now, team? What's it like now? It works? It should work. All right, but yeah, the market is down today, team. It's, it's, it's down today. Uh... We got VXRT gapping up here. Let's just go through some of these news releases. VXRT gapping up from 190s to 280s. And I have, uh, I have a, uh, like I have to admit, I haven't left my house in four days. I've been home for four days. I've been just hanging out here. I haven't left my house in four days. You know. At the same time, though, my kids and I have been playing baseball every day outside, you know, and so it's, it's kind of fun. I don't mind staying home and playing baseball with my kids every day. Um, it's fun, you know. We play baseball in the street with a wiffle ball, and it's highly entertaining, you know. I know, bro. I know, man. <laughs> yeah, I know, guys. Uh, I'm talking about stocks. I just had to mention that I think Habib, the Russian monster, is going to beat Ferguson as much as I don't want to say that. That's what my mind is telling me. I think Habib is going to take him down, hold him down. I don't think Ferguson's going to get a chance to uh, to uh, tap Habib that much or knock Habib out. I think it's just going to end like that. Um, all right. Let's look up the news for VXRT team. I'm going to pivot right to stocks just for you, bro. Just for you, bro. Uh, all right. VXRT is up after they are supposed to manufacture VXRTs. Uh, after Emergent is supposed to manfa manufacture VXRT's experimental COVID-19 vaccine. Man, everybody's talking about a vaccine. At a certain point, everybody's not going to put out a vaccine for this. You know what I mean? Like, you look at the news releases of, like, two out of three biotech stocks in the last two weeks they're all talking about oh we could do a covid vaccine it's like no y'all aren't man y'all are just saying that to pump your stock numbers up that's all you're doing you know i mean maybe one of these people one of these people or one of these companies will but in the end they're just pumping their numbers up man every biotech in the world's like oh covid covid19 we're dealing with it it's like no you're not man most of them are just fluffing their stock up it's nonsense uh, I don't know whether VXRT is one of the ones that are just fluffing their stock up. I just had to say it. Uh, Emergent and Vaxar did sign an agreement for the development manufacturing of their of their oral uh, coronavirus vaccine candidate. Um, and so, yeah, that's the news for VXRT. Just news on the, uh, on the vaccine coming out. Like I said, I don't know how much we can really trust this. Uh, we got a few other gap ups here. None of them are on any type of significant vol uh, volume. Maybe IBIO.
Alright, IBIO announced development of a proprietary COVID-19 vaccine candidate. Wow, another one, man. We'll see what IBIO does. APRN, you know, at least one that's up on good old fashioned sector relation. APRN, Blue Apron, a food delivery company. People are staying home. They are not leaving to go to the grocery store. And so in turn, what are they doing? They're ordering more food is what they're doing. And APRN is probably banking some money off of it. Just a related sector. If you don't like to short the market, you can go long on stuff like APRN. Uh, and so we'll see what happens. But that's why this one's up. There's no catalyst, but I'm telling you why this one's up. is because, again, people are just ordering more food because they're sitting at home not doing anything. And they don't want to go to the grocery store. And so APRN is up from 650s to 875. Uh, you know, up about 15%. We'll see what happens with it. We got BNTX here, gapping up on pretty low volume BNTX. These 13 companies are working on coronavirus vaccine treatments. Uh, one of them is BNTX. On March 17th, Pfizer announced that it would help develop and distribute BioNTech, which is BNTX, SE's COVID-19 vaccine candidate. And this is all quoting again from, uh, I don't know where this is from. This is from uh, MarketWatch. Um, Biotech plans to put the vaccine candidate into clinical trials in late April in Germany and the U.S. It is testing the vaccine in collaboration with Shanghai Fosun Pharmaceutical Group in China. Pfizer and BioNTech for several years have said they would partner to develop an mRNA-based influenza vaccine. Um, yeah, another vaccine company. We'll see what happens, but yeah, you know, we'll see. I think half of them are just making stuff up. Uh, HOLX, we'll see what happens with this one as well. Your music volume is too high, I can't hear you. All right, let me check this. Pharmaceutical group in China, Pfizer and BioNTech for several years have said they would partner to develop an mRNA-based influenza. All right, my bad, you were actually right. The volume was too high, I lowered it some. That should be better. Um, you look happier and more rested. I actually didn't get that much sleep last night. You're just catching me on my, my, my drink coffee phase of the morning. You know, when I first sit at this computer every day, it's the first sip of coffee I take. And so, you know, you probably catch me in a little bit of, just kind of waking up a little bit, drinking my coffee. I stayed up last night watching that movie, Uncut Gems. Good movie, but you know, didn't get that much sleep. Luckily, I have nothing to do, and I can just sleep after this if I really wanted to. All right. HOLX, the next one gapping up on this list today that we could take a look at. HOLX. Uh... So they received an emergency use authorization for their COVID-19 tests. Uh, the CEO was recently on CNBC. After they had a hearing and their CEO, like I said, was on CNBC. Uh, they also received FDA authorization to use the COVID test kits. Uh, so a testing company is up. Um, we'll see what happens with this one as well. NBAX virus company, VIRT, GameStop, Lakeland Studios, or Lakeland Industries. Um, some of these are up, but they're not up on much. Uh, lower volume for sure and then you know that's about it we got some gap downs in the rest of the stocks like the rest of the stocks are just following this market um, so we got like AMD gapping down we got MU Tesla down Microsoft Apple 
Uh, and so yeah, everything's mostly down today. And so yeah, here's the spy. Uh, let's see what oil was at. Oil is down to 50 cents a barrel. Whew. No, not, not 50 cents a barrel. Sorry, don't don't listen to me. That is absolutely wrong. Uh, this is just an ETF, and this ETF specifically is at 50 cents. This is the oil ETF. It just shows me on a short-term basis what oil is doing with a one-minute chart, but we'll see what happens today, guys. Um, but yeah, most stuff's following the market. Here's the market, down big. Um, AMD, MU, AMRN, Cannabis, Tesla, Microsoft, Tech, everything's down. Um, just because the market is down, you know. Boeing's down for sure. What's up, uh, Sergio? What's up, JB? What's up, Two Way, the champ? What's up, bro? How you doing, man? If you don't have a plan, you don't have a trade. Hmm. All right, and I and I I mostly agree with that. I think that, but I do think there's a few different ways of trading. I think that. I'm a very reactive trader, and so I don't know what the market's going to do. I don't I don't necessarily like to plan out my entire trade before the before the open. What I more so rather do is react to what I see whether the market is pushing up in a bullish way. I will a lot of the time go long. And if the market is dropping in a bearish way, a lot of the time I'll go short on the stocks I trade. But the point remains is that I'm not I'm not really making a plan before pre-market because in the end um I, I don't trade that first hour, and I also don't want to be too rigid to where if one little thing goes off on my, on my you know, plan, then I'm not going to take the trade because then a lot I probably wouldn't trade that much at all, and maybe that would be a good thing. But the point remains is that I don't, I don't necessarily like planning it out before the bell. I more so like to just react to what I see at the open, and I still plan it out before the trade. I still after the open, I, I still see, okay, this is going on, so I'm going to try to do this. If the stock moves up here, then I'm going to do this, get out here, take profits here. And so I still make that pre I still make that pre-trade plan. It's just not a, it's not a directional plan. It's more so a reactive plan to what I see the market actually do, if that makes sense. But everybody's a little bit different. Uh, I know Mitch likes to plan out his uh, trading uh, with directional, you know, uses uh, before the open as well. So everybody's a little bit different and that's okay. Yeah, it's been fun. I've been uh, I've been working on my Linux, Kali Linux pen testing skills. Um, you know, it's fun. I told my wife, I was like, look, since I have to be home for the next, you know, indefinite future, I'm just gonna like learn some new stuff. And so I've been like learning penetration testing uh, with Kali Linux, and that's been fun. Um, uh, I've been uh, obviously I've been working on uh, React, my React. JavaScript skills, obviously, you know, uh, I've been learning React Native lately, that's, uh, the difference, I, I learned React, and, uh, React, I thought React Native would be very similar, but it's not, it's way, uh, it's way more complicated, mostly from hooks, which are a newer part of React, um, and so that's what I've been doing, I've been trying to be productive, but man, um, I've been trying to be productive, but man, uh, a lot of free time here at home. My kids are probably going crazy. Oh, and good news though, my account should be pretty close to $2,000 in profit. And I'm gonna make that swing today and try to break that 2K profit level. Uh, 
yeah, I am like 50 bucks away from 2,000 in profit. I am at $1,947 in profit. So yeah, I am like, I am 53 bucks, really $52 and 30 cents, 31 cents exactly uh, away from that $2,000 profit level. And I'm gonna shoot for that. We're gonna go for that. We're gonna try to break 2K in profit. Keep building this thing up. That's right, Scott. What's up, the best? What's up, dude? Uh, so yeah, I could probably go over some overall market news here as well, too. Let me see. I hate that how I can, I can if I do one thing, it just completely minimizes my charts. Um, all right, so here's a few different releases that came at, out today. Number one, this is reported by Reuters. Uh, this is reported by Reuters that the Trump administration is seeking $45.8 billion in supplemental funding for U.S. agencies amid the coronavirus and also a separate from proposed, this is separate from the proposed stimulus package he talked about. And so, yeah, uh, Trump is seeking $45.8 billion in supplemental funding for U.S. agencies. Uh, also here, guys, like this says, I think we'll get some halts today. It just depends. Um, It's, uh, it's been the most volatile trading in the last few weeks, it's saying here, uh, that we've had in the last 10 years or so. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, like I said, we'll probably get a halt today is what I'm assuming. Uh, the reason I think we'll probably get a halt is because it's all about what the S&P 500 does. If this drops 7%, they're going to close the market for 15 minutes. They're going, uh, they're going to what we call halt the market with the circuit breaker halt, for, uh, which just means they're trying to slow down selling. Uh, they're trying to slow down buying or selling is what a circuit breaker does. Um, and so with that said, the S&P 500, you know, it looked strong yesterday and we had a green day yesterday. But if you look at the SPY now, the SPY is very, very low here. Uh, and so the SPY actually has a pre-market as to where the actual market doesn't or the S&P 500 does not. And so we'll get a compensating move down when the S&P 500 opens because the SPY is way down in pre-market and the S&P 500, the last time we saw it, it was basically up here. So like if you look at this, if we delete all this stuff, if you look at this, this was the last place we saw the S&P 500. And so when it opens, it's going to make a compensating move. Uh, let's see how big this move is on S&P. Uh, like I said, I think we'll get a 7% drop and it'll probably get halted at the open again um, today. We'll see though. We'll watch it. Let's look at where that 7% level is. So if we look at the S&P 500, um, and, and it's 7% from the previous closing price, which is, let me, uh, the previous closing price for the S&P 500, let me load this really quick, is, uh, it looks like we closed right here, 25, 29, 19. So yeah, this is the closing price. And so from here, from there down is where we're looking at. So... We're looking at a 7% drop. If we drop 7% in the S&P 500, it's going to look, let's see, 25, 2, 9, 19 times 0.07, 7%. And so a 7% drop in the S&P 500 would be $177.04, $177.04. Uh, and so 177.04, if we take 25, 29, 19, and then we minus it by 177.04. The S&P gets down to $2,352.15. That's when we're going to get halted. And so that is... $23.52.15 is going to be right around here. That's almost exactly it. So for the market hits this level, guys, the market hits this level right here. I'm gonna make this bigger too, so people can actually see it. This level is when the market gets halted right here. Again, it's 25, it's 23.52.15, exactly. That's 7%. So once we get here, the, the market's gonna halt if we get there. And so that's something to pay attention to today, guys. Uh, again, they're judging it by the S&P. SPY is down pretty big so far in pre-market. And uh, with that said, I think we're going to get a big drop in, in the S&P 500 this morning. What's up, Chase? What's up, Stock Market? What's up, Hunter? What's up, Adesh? Uh, 
And so yeah, we look at oil, oil's down, the market is down. Um, I can look at a few other news releases here. But yeah, looking at this, uh, market is down pretty big. I could go ahead and read a few other stories here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and read the ETF preview here as well. Uh, it says, futures are back in the red as Wall Street assesses U.S. policy response from the impact of the COVID-19. And this is all quoting from MT Newswires. Uh, it says, uh, it, they were mostly in, stock futures were mostly in negative territory once again, reflecting the market's growing anxiety over the COVID-19 and its economic impact, despite efforts of central banks led by the U.S. Fed Reserve to, erase re uh, to, re to ease rates and flush billions of dollars into the financial system. Market sentiment remained on edge as investors mold the U.S. efforts amid the business and eruptions, caused by the U.S. coronavirus outbreak. After cutting rates twice this month by a total of 1.5 percentage points, the U.S. Fed said it will purchase commercial paper used by companies as part of an effort to boost lending, borrowing, and spending in the world's biggest economies. The size of this facility will be $10 billion, the Fed said in a statement published on its website yesterday. Uh, further, Supporting the U.S. economy is a proposal from Trump administration for a $1 trillion stimulus package that will give America's $1,000 in the next two weeks, as well as extend help to airlines and small businesses hit hard by the outbreak, according to media reports. Uh, and so, yeah, we can look at commodities here as well, which, again, if we look at crude, it's down 9%. If we look at UWT, it's, a under, it's an ETF with the underlying asset being crude oil. It's down... Uh, the U.S. oil fund is down 9%, crude is down 9%, natural gas is down 5%, U.S. natural gas fund is down 4%, gold is down roughly 1%, the Spider Gold Trust is down roughly 1% as well, silver is down roughly 1%, and the iShares Silver Trust is down nearly 6%, and so big drops today in almost everything, um, you know, and, and this is just a big story, like if we look at any high cap stock here, then like the reality is like, look, AMD, down, Tesla, down, BYND, down, uh, MU down, AMRN down, CGC down. Every stock, unless it's a coronavirus related stock, is down with this market. Every single stock in the world. And they have been for, um, you know, uh, uh, the indefinite future. We're probably going to see stocks drop as long as the coronavirus continues to impact the U.S. Uh, is what I think. Maybe we'll see an uh, improvement and a move up. I hope we do. I, gen I genuinely hope we do. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, almost every single stock has been dropping. I'd say I'd say a large majority of stocks. I'd say at least uh, I'd say at least sixty percent of stocks in the U.S. market have dropped at least twenty percent in the last two months. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But I, I think if you look at almost every single stock that's not coronavirus related, you know, and I would say at least sixty percent of these stocks have dropped at least I don't know ten to twenty percent in the last really month or so. Uh, and so we'll see. But Everything's been dropping. Maybe when this coronavirus stuff eases up, the stocks will rebound some, but, you know, scary, scary thing. Hey, what's up, Junior? My man. What's up, Junior? Thanks, bro. The trend is your friend. Yes, sir. That's why I use the VWAP. Um, I use the VWAP, and, and the VWAP tells me the intraday trend. Can I check out CX? I got you. Um, yeah, CX, I mean, 117 is the previous closing price. Um, it, let me see. It's it, just like everything else. I mean, if it, the real story, guys, if you want to see the real story, just look at almost every stock's daily chart. Like, seriously, like AMD, definitely getting affected by this. MU, definitely getting affected by this. AMRN, definitely getting affected by this. Uh, BYND, definitely getting affected by this. CGC, getting affected by this same thing a uh, every 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 tesla every mid and high cap stock you can think of is getting affected by this and most stocks have dropped at least 20 percent in the last few weeks uh, unless they're coronavirus stocks the only ones that have really somewhat been safe are biotech coronavirus stocks whether they be medical supply company stocks like apt or actual vaccine candidate stocks like uh, vxrt and uh, bntx you know most of these stocks are getting affected What's up, what's up, Beats? What's up, man? Updated my arsenal. Never know. You yeah, man. I feel you. You know.
I'm not going to say anything about that. I'm just saying my house is the wrong house to break into. That's all I'm really going to say. I'm in Texas right now. My house is the wrong house to break into. I'll just say that, you know. Not the best house. Um, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say, though. Uh, but yeah, guys, we'll see what happens with this market. Tesla down. Spy down big, again. Low of the last few years is 237.07. And so uh, we are at 237.10 now. We're right around the low of the last few years, team. It's kind of a crazy market. Yeah, this is, or actually, so the new low is actually here. Let me draw this out. It's at 235. So the new low is actually right here. This is the new low. We can zoom in on that a little bit so you can see it. This is the low of the last few years. And we just hit that. Let me make a big whiff so you can see it. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, that is the low of the last few years at 230, 235 even. Exactly 235. What sector do you think will grow after the virus is clear? Do you mean what sector do I think is going to rebound or what sector long term is actually going to like grow? Uh, because the, uh, I think most stocks are going to rebound. I think when the coronavirus fears clear up, maybe if that's in a few months, uh, I think most stocks are going to rebound some. Like I said, any mid and high cap stock mostly has dropped at least 10%. The only stocks that have remained immune to them are biotech stocks. But any mid and high cap stock has mostly at least dropped 10% in the last few weeks. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, they're all dropping with the market. You know what I mean? Um, almost every, it, 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 it's self-evident. Like if you look at stocks, like look at the long-term stocks of these charts. AMD, down. MU, down. Kron, down. CGC, down. You know, look at look at these stocks in the last few weeks. AMRN, down. Uh, BYND, down. Uh, CRWD, down. Uh, the only, you know what I mean? Every stock has dropped uh, in, in the last few months or in the last week or two. Long term, uh, I don't know, man. Um, we'll see. Uh, it's hard to tell. I'm not much of a fundamental investor. Um, I think I think retail is going to go down for the indefinite future until technology progresses at a rate to where we don't really have retail anymore, and most people just use. Uh, and I think uh, this is the reality. Okay, if you want to look at what stocks are going to remain safe, uh, if that we're gonna if you want to look at stocks that you think are gonna remain safe from businesses like Amazon you know Amazon is gonna be out there destroying a lot of businesses and it already has to a certain extent because people don't want to uh, people don't want to go to the store anymore if they can just order stuff off of Amazon and get it shipped to their house in a day and so you want if you want to look at what brick and mortar stores are ultimately going to be successful you want to look at the stores where the convenience factor sways towards actually going to the store where it's way more convenient to go to the store than it is to order it and deal with those ramifications of ordering it and so the 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 uh, brick and mortar stores that I think are going to be successful to a certain extent are clothing stores and I think electronic stores because there's it's a very risky business selling electronics online it really is I, I have an Amazon store and I don't know how often I get people that scam me just for books alone. And so with technology, it's even worse. They'll they'll order a laptop or they'll order a phone and then they'll tell Amazon they never received it or that they received an empty box. And usually it's just terrible people that are just screwing over these sellers, uh, just, just stealing from them. They're just terrible people most of the time. And that is the risk of doing electronics like that online. I know if I buy a new computer or a new tech device, I don't really want to wait. I'm a big nerd, by the way, though. I'm a big computer nerd. And so I don't necessarily want to wait to go get my technology and get my stuff, my electronics. I, I go to Best Buy. And so I think stuff like that is going to remain long term. But I think other type of brick and mortar stores like Macy's, JCPenney, obviously, uh, most of those are going to fail um, e eventually. I don't think they're going to be sustainable. Um, and so... Yeah, Home Depot Lowe's, exactly. Home Depot Lowe's. Those are interesting stocks that I think will be strong because people have to go to them. You can't order nails. You could, I guess, but there's no point. You know, when you when you need construction supplies you or landscaping supplies, you need it right now. You can't order it. And so I think those are going to be a little bit more immune to it. Um, but again, 
You know, it's hard to tell. I don't want to tell you the wrong answer. I'm not much of a fundamental investor, to be honest. So let me get Mitch in here. Yo, yo, what's up, Mitch? What's up, man? What's up, dude? All right, let me, uh, let's get a sound check in here, guys. Let me know how the music is. I might have to turn the music down a little bit more. Dude, you talking about my retail stocks? Bro, I'm talking about JC JCPenney's about to go bye-bye. Macy's about to go bye-bye, man. The only thing Macy's going to have left is a parade in a few years. That's it, you know? No one, no one wanted to listen to me about a short on Macy's? Huh? <laughs> Well, I mean, I think every stock is dropping. I think every stock is dropping. Uh, Any hey, stock man. aside but from biotech is dropping right this now. Is, this is the difference, though. These were weak stocks in a strong environment. Now we're in a weak environment in a weak stock. They're going to zero, man. Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. I do think... I do think it's mostly from. I think the market's dropping on every stock. If we look at every no, stock, it's falling. It, you get what I mean by that, right? Like we were in such a good market environment when when the spy was at all time highs. Right. When when consumers were buying, everyone was spending money. And so you're yet basically these stocks were struggling. Right. So you're basically what, what you're trying to say is basically that these stocks were struggling already, and so they're certainly going to be struggling in this time, and they might be the ones that don't survive because 100 percent yeah that's what i'm trying to point out yeah i feel you and that's absolutely right those are the ones that are going to have the hardest time dealing with this impact uh, specifically you know companies like he's saying that were struggling beforehand that makes perfect sense because they're going to have a hard time rebounding other healthy companies they, they might just say yeah this will be fine once it's over elon musk is like he's chill but exactly these good, companies good. you know Good knowledge there, guys. It's a lot of what a lot of people are talking about is look for the golden eggs that are cheap. Right. But if it's a trashy stock when the market was hot, guess how it's going to be now? It's going to be horrible for them. Uh, you yeah. know, the reason why is that, you know, these companies were already probably struggling with debt, not meeting their expectations. And now the debt got more expensive and their their sales are going to slow down even further than they were <coughs> so those are the ones that i'm really concerned on um, macy's i think is almost even out of the question now um, just because the risk and reward doesn't make sense anymore but if you look at nordstrom this is another one i'm going to call out now um, this is the one that i think you can see some big change in price here um, this is one that stuck around for a long time you know from 2008 this was at 30 dollars i could see this one maybe heading down towards 50 and if it heads on towards 50 it will lose more than a hundred dollars on the value it got up there to like 180s yeah i don't know man i don't really like uh wait which, which what is nordson nordstrom is ndsn that's not nordstrom that is nordson let me see nordstrom is the is the outlet it's something else man my wife knows it uh it is see it's not that's jwn is what it is yeah that's what it is my bad no you're good you're good um no my wife knows uh but yeah nordstrom i don't think they're gonna yeah this is going this is going down yeah i feel you man they always got Expensive. a bunch of people in there, but you know. Yeah, but this is the thing. It's the thing. It, it has a bunch of people, but this is also part of what I, the story. You know, when I when I go off of these, I base them on stories, not necessarily the individual stock itself. Right. Um, these are more macro economical understanding of hey, um, the, the stocks that were struggling were like you said the big uh the brick and mortar box stores and they were struggling in a like we talked about a thriving environment now that we don't have a thriving environment where people are going to stay home i don't think people are doing clothes shopping anytime soon dude i ain't buying no so, clothes man i'm, I'm I'll, I'll wear white tees every day i don't care man I exactly ain't, I ain't touching nobody so, else's clothes right now so know? so look for the weak stocks to continue weaker Look for strong stocks to only continue strong if you can see their business not taking major hits. Let's say an e-commerce company like JD, uh, an e-commerce company like Amazon. 
um, and uh, pretty much a technology and e-commerce uh, company like maybe let's say Uber because they have Uber Eats. Yeah. Um, stuff like that is what you need to look for. Um, look for things that support their business, yet they're at a good evaluation. Um, but if the stock has been weak in the past, and then now is being weak, I would not look for those bouncing. Those are called catching falling knives. And I mean, no hey, bueno. yeah. <laughs> you can play with that game. <laughs> yeah, 100%. What's up, Bill? Amazon acquiring Kohl's. I, mean, I think Kohl's was, I don't know, man. Ooh, so what's going on, guys? Everybody, what's up? Good morning, good morning. How are we doing out there? Yeah, I'm probably going to get some halts at the open today, bro. Yeah, man. I mean, we're, look where the market is overall. I mean, yeah. we're down to two thirties. Yeah, man. Remember when I said that the worry was two eighty? We're yeah. long from then. I know, dude. <laughs> I was. I, I, remember. I remember the worry said, was three hundred. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I thought three hundred was a normal pullback. Yeah. Once we got to the two eighties, it was like, whoa, what's going on? Then we hit through the two eighties, and that's when we woke up one day and we were at the two fifties. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, malls are Gideon says malls are closing. Nordstrom is often anchor stores. Yeah, hundred percent. I have a few friends that work there. It's unfortunate. I mean, it's. Uh, I think we're gonna see a lot of this, and I think it's going to. Uh, another one is, you can look at Coles. This one is gonna be. Uh, this one is gonna be uh, something that people talk about. You know, like two thousand eight and two thousand nine. Um, is what I think it is. I think it's Coles gonna be something. Was... something people KSS. talk about. KSS. There you go. Look at that one. That one's taken down too. That one might be going to zero also. <laughs> Gotta be careful with these. All right. Uh, uh, what's up, Sean? My man, Sean member badge we gotta put some more member content out we should work on that mitch uh, maybe uh, while since i'm home and i'm not doing anything like i said i haven't left my house in like four days uh maybe i'll try to work with some member content that'll be cool all right let me see all right let me know how the volume is team uh, not trying to panic but new york city mayor says military assistance is needed in the city crazy man crazy it's a scary world man it's a scary world <laughs> i would be scared in new york man i would be i would literally be in my house with freaking bolts on my door right. dude i haven't left in four days oh I, I got enough food i got enough everything to be chill here at my house you know as well, long as they don't cut my internet net off i'll be yeah, fine yeah i just I, I just went for a supply run <laughs> yeah hey well, dude, stay away from if me you know bro. what i mean oh, yeah i feel you <laughs> Need my yeah, supplies. Man. My mom's in Canada right now. My mom's in Canada right now. Uh, <laughs> Let's just say I don't think the cannabis stocks are going down. Yeah, and people are gonna be chilling. They're gonna be chilling at home, man. Um, <laughs> They're gonna be stocking up. <laughs> Yo, anonymous. I love, I love the 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 mentality of wanting to buy, but I gotta put you on a timeout because yeah. you repeated it a million times. I'm, I'm gonna do it first, bro. Chill out, dude. <laughs> Oh. Here's a here's a here's a lovely lesson for everybody here today, guys. We have no obligation <laughs> to answer your question in chat. We got 160 something people in here. We might not get to your question, and if we don't get to your question, don't spam it in the chat like a five year old. You know, that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, all right, Macy's looking weak, bro. CGC looking weak. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, man. Um, all right, so let's get on a positive note. We'll come back to negatives. <laughs> Right, right. Let's we'll get go on back some to positive. <laughs> I got you. Uh, uh, there's too much negative here, right, so I'm... let's let's jump on something positive here. All right, uh, rad man, the rad right. trying to get rad again. Look at this. Look at this daily and weekly chart. Doesn't this look good? Let me see. Hold on. Make sure they can see it. All right. Uh, Rite Aid, rad man. 
Yeah, people are going to be, pharmacy stocks are going to be up, I think, too, depending on. So uh, my biggest thing, a lot of the times with these cheaper stocks, you have to look at the weekly chart. Why? Because sometimes these take weeks to develop the consolidation in the price point, because what ended up happening was there was way too much pushed into this stock at the beginning. This stock went from an $8 price point all the way up to a high of $23.88. That was a massive run. We're talking about a 211% run. So now we're getting a pullback. We got the pullback that went down towards $10 and held there, which was about 60% of pullback. Now we're getting a push up and you're getting a big consolidation in this area here, guys. Um, so this consolidation in this area, all we need is the volume to really start pushing up higher than let's say 34 million or get up here to 50 million and this stock could be right back up at 20s and heading towards 24. Um, and the reason I like RAD is that we're starting to get a supporting story for these stocks. I'm starting to really like RAD, CBS and Walgreens. Why? Because I feel that these stocks are stocks that yes, they're going to suffer in customer count, but they're going to make up in customer count by actual purchases. Um, these are companies that have really high margin on their products. And I feel like their stores are going to get wiped out. And if their stores get wiped out, it doesn't matter if the customers come to the store or not. They're going to, they're going to buy up all the product in the store. And these stores have a tendency of holding on to inventory for a long period of time. So this refresh and selling of inventory, I think is actually going to help them. They're all going to work on their inventory, uh, maximize their margins. And this should actually be a positive for them, I think, in the long run, not a negative. And then when you see Rite Aid pushing up, you see CVS bottoming here at 5203. I think that 5203 is going to be very vital to the stock if it wants to make its way back. Um, but it is at a long-term support. So definitely going to go ahead and look at it. How about Brady getting transferred to your bucks over there, man? I mean, I think Breeze is still going to rain down on him. So what do you think of the the health stocks and the way that I'm looking at it, at least these health uh, retailers? Uh, does Walgreens have a stock? Eric? Yeah. WAL, I believe. Yeah. Uh, no, Walgreens is something else. Uh... It is WBA. Well, it means WBA. There you go. Yeah. That's what it is. This is why I like TC. It kind of helps you. You can even just type in the company name. And it'll tell you the. Yeah, because on my, on my black Wal Walgreens runs the game. The phone, you know, corner store pharmacy. Yeah. CVS is. Hey. Hey, we don't have that many out here. Let's look at the the bottoming effect. Where can they bottom? So what I like to look for bottoms is yearly or monthlies. We can pull up the monthly. There's, there's Bailey. Right. What's up, Bailey? Good drive there at 34.56. I think that's uh, ultimate bottom here at 34.56. Um, and then you can look to see if the second drive would hold. Um, and that was 45.75s. We could have a good bottom here in Walgreens right now. Um, risk would be down 10 more dollars. Uh, potential reward is up there to 60s and 70s. Of course, this is not an intraday look, but I'm just trying to say off of the dailies and weekly charts. Um, and I and I do think these stocks, when they come out with their sales numbers, they're actually going to be good and they going to bounce the stock back. A lot of these have health uh, health connections, like CVS is connected with Anetna, um, the health care provider. Okay. Yeah. Aetna, and and I think that's going to help a, a, a substantial amount. Um, yeah, costs might be higher, but if more people go to the doctors in the long run, they, they're profitable. They know what they're doing. So um, I think this could be a, a good bottom here uh, if it holds today. So look for RAD, CVS. I have alerts on all of them. The one I like the most is RAD. Why? Because it was super cheap before and now is getting support because of the coronavirus and also a new strategic outlook. Um, this one has support um, by, I think it was, was it Amazon that did the big investment in, in RAD? Um, uh, I'm not sure. I, I know someone did a big investment in RAD. Win. 
Um, it was back at this time, uh, back in December. Let me see. I can I can zoom back a little bit. Uh... It might have been November. Anything. I'll find it. Um. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. We don't have that many Rite Aids out here. We have some Rite Aids in Louisiana. Uh, and they still look like they did 20 years ago. Um. Yeah, we're gonna haul it this morning for sure, Nathan, 100%. Yeah, I'm trying to see what the, the news is for, or what the uh, investment was for Rite Aid. Let me see. No worries, I'll look it up. You want to get me started on the feds oh my god they're getting me so mad so you talking about uh are you talking about rite aid and albertson's they had a 24 billion dollar merger that died last year um yeah amazon's starting to roll out an online pharmacy too i'm not seeing anything else with it though no worries i'll find it most have been bought by Walgreens, yeah, for sure. Walgreens taking over the game. Not that I know of, but haven't left home in a couple days. Yeah, I've been home chilling for four days straight. I've been playing baseball with my kids every day with a wiffle ball and a plastic bat out in our driveway, though, and it's been fun, you know. Where in New York are you? Yeah, man. Houston's not kind of a scary place. They think it's community spread in my city, so we're staying home, you know? I mean, it's community spread pretty much yeah, everywhere. Yeah. yeah, it's inevitable at this point. I mean, just look at the testing results. The testing results come with actually testing. So it's just clear as obvious. Every single time we test more, we find more people right and and people <laughs> so. and, right and people are panicking because the number of cases are going up but the reason the number of cases are, cases are going up so dramatically is because we're testing for it more often like mitch is saying and so that doesn't necessarily mean we have more cases than we did i mean we do but it's not drastically more like we really think we're just finding out about more cases because we're testing for it more often um so right now, just to look at this, right now for coronavirus cases, we have 204,727 total, yeah, 8,270 deaths. Uh, we have 113,000 active cases, uh, 107,000 of those are mild, so 94%. Um, the U.S. got another seven deaths today, another 124 cases total. I feel like China's got to be lying about how many cases they're getting. Um, <laughs> they, they said they only had 13 new cases today. I mean, it's plausible, I guess, because they're they're really locking down. But, you know, with Iran, Spain, you know, everybody getting so many new cases, uh, it's kind of scary. Yeah, man. 100%. In the end, though, it's not anything too crazy. Like the, the I can tell you still... I can tell you right now, though, watch the banks. When they bottom, that's when our market's coming back. Yeah, for sure. Why? <laughs> they just got every single restriction that was put on them. Um, <laughs> just got relieved. Yeah. Um, so the feds rolled out another uh, kind of way of making money also. They rolled out what's called the primary dealer credit facility. Um, and what does the primary dealer credit facility do? It's pretty much the kitchen sink of lending. Um, think about it this way. Businesses um, and investors now can come to the feds for short term overnight loans or term loans that are up to 90 days. These are very, very low in interest. 
and what they can bring to these primary dealers is to get funding for assets like investment grade corporate debt securities, international agencies, mortgage backed securities, asset backed securities, and even equity securities, excluding the ETFs. So what they're pretty much doing is the Fed's removing almost all of the measures that were put in place after the financial crisis of 2008. Um, th- I think this is not the way to go about it, but they're they're trying to do whatever it takes right now. And so the whatever it takes mentality is being put in to the market. So you're going to start seeing whatever it takes swings. So this, this may mean that sometimes we get drives on the SPY of 10% up, followed by drives of the market 10% down. Why? Because the market and the feds are trying to do whatever it takes to hold this market where it is. And really, at the end of the day, what's going to end up happening is, yeah, these banks are going to start being able to make some money because they're going to be able to loan at such cheap amount that, hey, if you gave me right now a million dollars, you know, in this market environment, I could probably make some good money, especially if I'm loaning it at 0%. Right. <laughs> so you guys got to understand that eventually our economy is going to come back. So this isn't, this isn't necessarily the end of the world, but necessarily a new bottom. Right. And that's why I think everyone needs to approach it is the new bottom. What's the new bottom? How far are we going down? Where's the shopping list looking like? Um, and also, um, I mean, you're, you're hearing everyone state it, that the feds are trying to do whatever it takes at all costs. This is going to be buying up treasuries, buying up a new bottom. And when you buy up a new bottom, eventually lending becomes cheap uh corporate debt um they actually gain corporate debt i think in this case you're gonna see companies actually go further in debt instead of the opposite which is taking care of their debt and why i mean if i could loan for cheaper to pay my loan that has a higher interest what would you do john uh say that again sorry so if you could, let's say if I could, if you loan, I have loaned out to you one year ago and I loaned out to you at a, let's say to make it easy at a 5% interest rate, right? Yeah. But I can loan you another million dollars right now to cover that $1 million loan at 3% or 2%. Would you take the loan? Which one? Yeah, you, you yeah. take the cheaper loan to cover the more expensive loan, right. you pay that loan off, and now you're left with a 2% loan, not the 5% loan. And you know what that is, guys? You know what a great example actually that is? That's what short selling actually is. That's exactly what short selling is. Uh, that's actually the process of short selling. I know you're not talking about short selling, yeah. but I'm just saying that's what short selling is. It's it's getting getting loaned some shares profiting from that movement and then giving the shares back so you profit a little bit uh, and you give the liquidity back right exactly and so you know you take liquidity to give it back here's the bell guys and, and that's really what we're looking at here guys and that's what we got to be careful of and and we'll see if it works you know yeah. I, I don't really like to be a positive or negative on that i just don't necessarily agree with it yeah for sure all right, so look, this is the halt level on the S&P 500. So here's the SPX. The halt level is 230, uh, 230, 2352.50. I think it's like 2352.15 or something like that. So it's right around this level here. We hit this level, market's getting halted. Um, and we're not that far away from it. Uh, so here's the S&P 500. Again, here's that level right here. We hit that level, market gets halted. Let me uh, move this over a little bit. Huge spreads right now to start off and rad, so I'm not going to trade that right off the gates here yeah here it's a scary day man i'm gonna wait um we'll see what we get but especially right out the gates yeah for sure Uh, we hit this level down here though Uh, markets halted for 15 minutes we're getting some bounces though from what i see um yeah tesla at least 
Spies bouncing up. Maybe that'll keep the market from getting halted. It, right now, the S&P 500 is just compensating for the huge drop the spy took, uh, the market took before you know, in pre-market where it couldn't compensate for. But if we get a nice rebound here in the SPY, then we're not going to get halted, and I'm hoping we don't. All right, Rad. Rad looks good here. Looking for a pullback in Rad. Lots of volume stacking in there. Looking for 80s. Anything pullback to the 80s there. Rad now up there to 1625s from 1575s, 50 cent move. Nah, I w when Mitch asked me that, I was working on, uh, I was working on my uh, level that we're gonna get halted in the stock. So I, was, I wasn't, sorry Mitch, I wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it'll happen though, you know. I'm doing my own thing over here. I got, I got no problem. <laughs> no, those are, those are more along. It's like a question I'm giving out to everyone, but right. only John can answer really. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I probably should have been All paying right. attention. You know, my ADD. No worries, thing. guys. I'm I'm looking for this uh, pullback here in Rad to the VWAP. I'm looking for it to get there, but I haven't seen it yet. CRWD moving up strongly. So is LK, guys. LK with a super shoot up there. Man, LK is so volatile. Yeah. MU looking strong. AMD looking strong. Look for AMAT to just start ripping up there. Follow the other two techs. All right, so the SPY is moving back up. Looks like, uh, and the market's moving back up. So for now, we're safe. So we could probably actually trade some. Um, oh, yeah. I'm looking for bounces right now. Bebop bounces. Yeah, we got Walgreens, uh, Tesla's pulling back to the Bebop right now. Uh, Disney's actually down, surprising. Um, CTC's up. AMD ripping. Looking at, right now, I'm looking at space. All right, so the market's looking good. Looking for a slight pullback here to 50 or in the in the 40s, and I could risk right off at 35 or 37. Freestyle today? Not today, man. I got to charge. People are going to have to pay a little bit more for that. You know, I can't just... LK looking these. interesting for a pullback towards VWAP. I can't just give you these bars for free, you know. Uh, Tesla testing lows, pulling back testing lows right now. Um, AMD pulling back a little bit. Really volatile market here, guys. Be careful with your sizing. You just want to put that out there, guys. Be careful with your sizing. Know the range. Yeah. Some of these have huge ranges. There you go. AMAT pushing up there, following the MU and AMD. So look for VWAP bounces, plays in those as they pull back here. Looking at space here, guys, but the spread is way too massive, guys. You're talking about a 19 cent spread on only a 40 cent move. So I'm gonna get off of that. That's not a good risk to reward. That's not a good spread. Looking for Rad to pull back here. Rad looks good here. Looking for 16 here. All right, so the S&P 500 is, is pulling back a little bit. If it starts to break this low, could pull everything else down. The lower right, intraday. Looking. Looking for 16 is the crack here for a second, and then I'm going to get in here on rad. 
the low of the intraday in this S&P 500 is at 2390. Uh, we are at 2391.80, so we're very close to that now, actually pulling back to kind of test these lows. We'll see what the S&P 500 does here, but, you know, we still got a, a little bit of room. Again, the the uh, halted level is 2352. Mm, um, tried to get in there, guys, on rad. The spread didn't let me fill there, guys. I would have had a nice fill there in the 90s, 1590s right now. I put out. So we just broke the low of the day for the S&P 500, the low of the entry day. I like that drop race. there and rad, but wasn't able to get filled there. And I don't want to get in now because the risk is 40 cents now. MU, AMD looking interesting. So we might bounce at this low of the day right here in the S&P, watching it. We're at 2394s. So again, the low of the day now is 2387, 2388. Yeah, Rite would have been a really nice one here, guys. Um, just didn't get filled. Can't be mad. Put the order out there. Good order just didn't get filled. It would have been already uh, about a 35 cent, 40 cent gainer. Would be selling half of it now and looking for the rip. Good VWAP bounce play on rad. Just gotta let it go because I didn't get an entry. Spies back at the low of the day. Looking to find some support there. We'll see. AMD might be a good bounce here. I'm kind of watching it, but it's a little bit too late. But I'm going to let it test the lows here first. CGC looks good. For a little pullback here, and I can take a try and send CGC. Bounces at these lows. Spy still testing it though. It's at 2390. SPME. What's up, John? What's up, brother? Remember, guys, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, let's keep growing. Let's keep growing. Let's do it. Uh, remember to show your support for our channel here. We have almost 50 likes. We've got 250 people here though. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you click the bell, you'll get a notification when we do go live, which is every weekday morning. And show your support, help us grow. Hit that like button, team. Mm, just missed the VWAP play in CVS. Looking for a pullback to get into it. All right, Spy's kind of testing these lows at 23.88 for S&P. S&P 500 is. Yeah, all of them looking good today, guys. The ones that I mentioned, WBA, CVS, RAD, they all bounced there. Yeah, the spy ripped up nice this morning. They all bounced. Every single one of those that I mentioned pre-market, you got to be what bounce play. Tesla pulling back to the VWAP sum. Hey, my man Jeff, what's up, bro? Appreciate the sum, man. I'd like to see our WD here. My man Blake, appreciate the sub, bro. Welcome to the team, man. Already right, missed spy CRWD. All right, S and P five hundred bouncing here. Spy's doing a little bit of a VWAP bounce there too. Um, 
but we did bounce at those lows, which is good for the S&P 500. Um, it's going to give the market a lot of strength as long as we maintain above that. CDC broke out pretty significant amount. Not bad. Not a bad move there. Cron. Look at Roku, man. That thing's been ripping up. Roku's a huge push up. So for now, it looks like we're safe from the halt for now. Um, pushing up looks good guys market is looking okay uh, shout out to my man Armand appreciate the sub brother welcome to the team man John what benefit do you get for joining your my memberships on YouTube our memberships uh, we put out some exclusive content uh, for our members specifically, but it's mostly just a, a way to help support our free content. Like we, we try to keep it a free resource and community. So like we do have some like behind the scenes videos in there of like us testing stuff and, and analyzing our, our results, but it's mostly just a good way to help support our channel. Roku ripping up. Huge push. MU with a nice bounce there. You gotta play those tech secs a little bit better. Those are good bounces there on AMD and MU and AMAT. really good VWAP bounces today. Yeah, for sure. Even the Spy did it. Spy VWAP bounced off the VWAP. But like everything did with it. The spy did, CGC did, MU did, AMD did. Uh, everything. One of those days I wish I traded earlier. Uh, I was almost about to buy Tesla for the bounce, but it failed. Believe it or not. So Tesla's one of the only ones that I'm seeing that didn't do it. My man, Pradeep, welcome to the team, bro. Appreciate it, man. Welcome to the team. Hit that subscribe button, guys. We got 61 likes in here. Hit that like button, too. All right, APT coming back to VWAP. That one's going to be interesting. What happens to it at VWAP? Right now, looking at QCOM. Yeah, hang, hold it down, bro. I'll be right back. I'm taking my daily bathroom break. Trying to make it come down here, create another bottom, maybe even here at 50s, but looks better like for it to create another bottom here in this area, come back here, test, then break out through the 64. I'm holding right now, not not trying to jump in there too, too big right now, just going to wait. go heading down trying to create another support here Heading down there to the 32s. A 
hard down move by some stocks there. A lot of stuff pulling back. S&P 500 uh, pulling back to the lows again. Um, the low is 2380, 2388, I believe, is what the low was. Uh, so we are getting a flag-like pattern in AMD. Oh, I'm gonna watch the S&P. See what happens here. Getting another little bounce there. One that you could also watch is Grub, Grubhub. It's moving pretty well today. All right, so we're down to the lows of the S&P. Intraday lows, I mean. Let's see if we can hold these bottoms here. Yeah, just to show you guys. So this is the S&P 500. As you can see here, uh, this is the halt level right here. So if we hit this level today, we get halted. That's the 7% drop. We're still a pretty good distance away from that, so I don't think we're going to hit that anytime soon. But as you can see here, uh, we are testing this low in the S&P 500, which is actually here at 85. So that's the low. Um, again, this is the halt level, and uh, we'll see what we get. Look at that CVS VWAP bounce. Beautiful. Look at Rad. Man, this is when uh, when I tell you guys, uh, I started the day with the right idea, the right stocks, did not start the open with the right mentality. Wasn't looking at the stocks that I wanted to look at. And with that, I got caught in the open because uh, Rad, CVS, uh, and Walgreens all did what we wanted. So those are the times we need to execute. We we're expecting the bounce in there. Could have taken two attempts there in Rad and they both would have worked significantly up there now to almost 17. So had the right mentality today, just wrong way to execute it at the open. So we did bounce a little bit at the S&P 500. Uh, Jonathan Perez is here and he's giving us some interesting updates he said hey guys so i'm in the transportation business I actually run a transportation company and we were just notified that the canadian border was shut down to not essential non-essential travel travel so now we're trying to figure out what that definition is uh, it just means that usually i think the canadian border shut it down to where they only let u.s citizen or canadian citizens come in uh not they yeah. they're excluding the u.s in that though like i think they'll let u.s citizens for, in there for well. right now I, they're gonna cut that off too right and i think that's they're just giving it a couple yeah, like a little bit of time, just like the U.S. did. Like, come back, come back. You guys got, we're going to lock it down. Right. Yeah, and I, I get it. Uh, man. All these, I got to put all these people in timeout, man. They're just spamming right, up guys. the chat, man. I'm going to take a little shot here. If I can see this bottom out here, QCOM. Sorry, guys. Just don't spam the chat. If you're gonna, if look you're gonna it. say something, put it all in one message. Don't put it in like 30 different messages. And so, if you look at the chat, all you see is you. You know, if you're gonna say something, you can write up to 200 characters. Just put it all in one message, and you you'll never get banned. But if you put, hey, hi, my name is space space space, you know, you're gonna get banned every time. Wow, man. Look at that rad go, man. I can't believe I was on top of that one. Now it's up there to 1770s. Yeah, uh, um, we're still going. Yeah. Still going. Man, that that rad. <laughs> well, I'm gonna take a few on MU just right now. Uh, it's pulling back some. Uh, markets moving CVS back. CVS is CVS up, WBA up, 
look at those. This is when I tell you guys, sometimes I'm really on point, but you have to stick with your plan. This is why it's so vital. Yeah. I'm in a, a little position on MU. It's a little bit early for me. I'm in with 40 shares. Uh, and so I'm just kind of hanging out, letting the markets move up, benefit me some, hopefully. Let's see if we get a rip up here. About break even. Yeah, I'll get you something in just a second, buddy. What do you want? You want checks or you want Cheerios? Okay. All right. I'm going to have to make my son's breakfast. All right. All right. Just took a little starter. What's your share size? 50 shares. I'm going to add. Like, not a bad entry game. right there. Not a bad start there for QCOM. Let's see if we can start getting this to push up here. But yeah, definitely guys. I hope someone nailed those uh, health stocks today. I know I wasn't able to execute out the open. Gotta let it go, but hope someone was able to. This can show you that even if you know a stock's, not know, but even if you feel a stock's gonna go up, you gotta go ahead and stick with your plan because the plan was there to trade these right out the gates and we could have been nailing on these. Yeah. All right, there goes the SPY, AMD, a lot of stocks pushing up. I'm, I'm still holding a, a few shares here. I'm up uh, almost $10. We'll see if we can get that. Though. I'm gonna hold these, um, maybe hold them for break even. It just depends on what the market does here, but hopefully we get a rip up, rip up. And as long as we don't get a, a too drastic of a pullback, I could probably just hold it through this and let the market hopefully turn the other way and just drag this up even with small share size. So I'm just Man. hanging out right now. The Walgreens now a great lift there. Now up, I think from the open, almost 10%, three, three points. So definitely was on top of the right stocks today. Just gotta have that right execution that shows you guys. Jonathan Perez says, I'll let you guys know what I find out. I'm actually waiting for a phone call back at a, uh, from a border agent. Hey, well, good luck, man. Yeah, just let us know. Trump just tweeted it. All right, let's see what Trump tweeted. Trump tweet? No. Nah, never. You know, Trump doesn't tweet. <laughs> he doesn't even like tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so so Trump just tweeted a few different things. Tweeted. <laughs> uh, how do you say that? Tweeted. Uh, hey, buddy, listen to me. You just woke up. Tweeted. Okay? I'll get you your breakfast in a second. You just got up. I'm working right now. Wait until I'm out of this tray, buddy, and then I'll get you your breakfast. You act like that, I'm going to give you... What is he not like? Uh, I couldn't think of a food he doesn't like. My son likes everything. It's hard to get him with that. Uh, peanut butter sandwich with yeah. no jelly. Nah, I love that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take half off here. <laughs> uh, I just took half off of MU. Uh, but this is what Trump said. Trump said, we will be by mutual consent temporarily closing, temporarily closing our northern border with Canada to non-essential traffic. Trade will not be affected. Uh, so I, I think what that means is that they're closing the border to non-manufacturers and, and non-suppliers. Um, Right, but yeah, right, guys, looking move. for pullbacks here to add here. I'm looking good here. Looking to add here. Yeah, we're at the highs of the day. Looking good. See if we can break it. Order out to add. Now I'm up about almost 50 bucks on this. Look at that, guys. Oh, Boom. Okay. All right, I'm going to get out the rest here. I made a little bit of a, a small win there. We'll see what else we can find here. All right, I'm going to go make my swing son's. There. I'm going to go make my son breakfast. I'll be right back.
All right, guys, just added there, looking for a push back up there towards 64. All right, guys, as this pushes up to 64, I'm going to look to take some off there. Got to be careful with it here, though. That was a quick pull back there. Careful here, guys. Don't want this to flip on me. We'd want to see these 20s hold here. Really, 63 is the risk right now, which is third. Man. All right, might have to get out here, guys. It's pulling back here. Be careful. Showing weak signs there. There you go. Strength coming back in here. Let's see if it can lift through 50s. There you go. There's the 50s. No buyers there. There's the buyers. All right, here comes that third attempt here to break VWAP. All right, I'm back. Third attempt to break VWAP here, guys. This is that one, two, three rule. We have three supports here at the bottom in 6320s. So we're looking really good for my three, one, two, three rule. So I'm sticking in this right now. My position's all over the place. This is why I hide my unrealized for a little while, guys. I'm going to start pulling it out so you guys can see it. But this is why I hide it. Look at that Roku here. Um... Crazy market here. Be careful, guys. Yeah, man. But definitely on point, man. Uh, had the right stocks today. Probably trading the wrong chart, but hey, I missed them already. So one of the things I like to do is if I miss them, don't go back to them. Be careful here. Could head down. I think Thinkorswim needs to get their level 2 straight. I'm in uh, 20 shares of Roku, but I've been watching Thinkorswim, which has shown me 51 and 60s, and apparently it's nowhere near that. Now it's way below. I don't mind scaling into this and adding into it, though. I'm about break even, actually, now. We, we got a nice little spike there. but uh, I'm hoping the market breaks out here. Not reverses here. Now I gotta be careful with this downside risk, guys, because it should hold that bottom. It should not go through 20s again. 
And I just took half off there. Um, holding these 10 shares. Trying to ride this up some. Uh, on Roku, just a little small trade, but I'll take it. At least I got in at the bottom, guys. Looking good here. See if we can get this rip above here, 70s. There you go. Order out to close some at 64s. If we can rip above VWAP, I'll go ahead and I'll close some. Yeah, I got out of my little 20 share position on Roku. I'm up about 30 bucks on the day. Um, I was able to ride that one up too. There you go. That looks good for me. Let's see if we can get a push up to 64s here. Yeah, I mean, I was just scalping it. Mostly what I've been doing, especially in that first 30 minutes, is, is mostly just scalping moves up and down really quick, Bailey. Uh, it's been working out really well. Yesterday, I had a bunch of green. Um, same thing with today so far. But, uh, but yeah, I'm just There's nothing scalping. wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. You just got to stay high accurate. And yep. that's what John's doing. You guys see it. Yep. He's taking the green when he has the green. And that's how he's staying accurate. He's not letting it turn red. Especially if he gets a good entry and just heads directly to his area that he's looking for a target. Yep. Yeah, I'm trying to break that 2K in profit. I'm pretty close. I am at. I need about right, another. Guys, Go ahead. This should hold the bottom now. Uh, I need about another, you know, fifty dollar win, and I should be over that level. There you go. That looks good. Now we just need some buys to come in here now. If not, this will probably retrace and crack our level, so. All right, with that push, I'm gonna set a stop on the pullback. Look to sell 50 of it as it breaks 64 here. There's 92s. Yes, S&P's breaking high of the day. All right, guys, good. just sold 50 at 92. Sold 50 shares at 92. So now that we got this part, there you go. Ease off the risk. Now we set a stop at our break even pricing. And if it goes to it, we get out. If not, we stick in this. I'm going to put it two cents below here at at 35. Yeah, all right, buddy. Okay. Set the stop. Let this work here. Let this try to get up there to 6450s, 6480s. See if we can make another hundred dollars, man. Another hundred dollar day. Yeah, man. I mean, Walgreens and rad i think i'm not looking back man those things Choo. look at cvs too i hope someone nailed those all right so here's the s p 500 we'll see if it pulls back to the uh to the previous closing price i think that's the biggest level Right now, everything's up, so I'm just waiting for pullbacks because everything on my stock list is up, except unless it's a coronavirus stock, but MU, AMRN, CGC, S&P 500, Roku, uh, everything is up. And so, ooh, big pullback in the SPY. I don't know if that was a glitch or not. Uh, pulling back towards the resistance, which was 242.66. Look for that to use as support now. Mine pulled back all the way to 240, 248.00. Yeah, it was a wick. Yeah. It was a wick. Let's see where the body closes right now. It's going to be important. You don't want to see it back to 240s. You want to see it holding that 242. Yeah, for sure. And then that's kind of pulling nothing. back a little bit, but not yeah, that it's, much. it's a measured pullback. Let's see. All right, guys, we're going to get 
through these 30s, get through 64.50s, and we'll be up more than a dollar on our share count. We'll probably try to get take off to where we have 80s, 80 or 90 dollars realized. Um, so let's see what we can do here. APRN. Somebody said they're called an APRN's hot. Yeah, APRN is making a crazy move. Blue Apron, which is a food delivery company, but man, this thing is up to <laughs> almost 12. Was halted at 1168, which is the highs, and uh, I'm assuming nice. it's a circuit breaker halt. Nice. It should work out for you, but you never really know, so I feel you, man. Justin, Justin's in here scared, he said. Um, One to watch. APT. APT. Now that that one's going off, you might get some sympathy plays on the ones that have been like a rocket. Yeah. Yeah, at this point, the market's up so much and everything's following it. I'm just waiting for some pullbacks. You know, we should get some. Maybe CTC uh, got rejected at that previous close of the day, that previous closing price. Uh, and so we'll see. But with the SPY and the S&P moving up, breaking highs, breaking support, breaking resistance, uh, all right, guys, gonna sell some here in the 60s. All right, uh, I had to cancel an order there. Oh, well, got 70s for it. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> there you go, guys, up there to the resistance. Let's get it over 100 on the PL and take our profits. Let's see if this can break out over 100. Sixty fours. Can we get to sixty fives? You think it's a glitch, Bailey? Yeah, it might be. Um, I see it on my end too. It doesn't look like it was. It doesn't look like an actual move. Um, I think it was just a glitch in the market itself. But uh, we'll see. You know. I have an order to sell here at ninety twos. All right, guys. So this just breaks up a little bit. I want to get out. Take my profit. So let's see this uh, APRN got halted at 11 or at 904 it is 908 so in one minute it should resume all right Roku's pulling back some here might give me another entry uh, I was looking for CTC more than anything but I need a better entry for that one Roku's big pullback S&P's pulling back some but Looking for the second push up, but not getting it, guys. Yeah, not getting it. I'm gonna just try to take the most profit I can and just take it here. John, you don't do super chat? Yeah, we got a super chat button. Yeah, just click the money sign below you, brother. You trying to donate money to me? Isaac, I appreciate it, bro. Is it because Brady left? You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Guys, I'm not liking that. I'm just going to get out, take my profit. $81 there. I wanted the 100 Maybe got a little greedy. I had 95 there, but not going to get even more greedy than that. Just take your profit. Yeah, it's a good win. Good ad. Good win. Another great trading day. Um, I don't think I might take another trade, but we'll see. If I do, it'll be, I'll limit the downside risk of it to like $10 or $20. Right. to be smart since i've already made my goal you don't want to go and hurt your goal my goal is that hundred dollars a day i found that that's being a really really good sweet spot for the intro account right hundred dollar days yeah you get a hundred dollars a day on an intro you, you you're good man you know you can survive off of that for sure and grow that thing um I'm, and another thing that i want you guys to realize is that yeah um, you guys see a complete difference in John and I's strategies here. Um, John's just scalping, getting those small share size, uh, the small uh, cents, but bigger share size. I'm going here with smaller share size and getting bigger ranges. That's all it really is. Yeah. Yeah, we have a different style. That's okay. You know, it's all a little bit different. He trades a little bit earlier than me. Uh, I trade a little bit later. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of how it goes. Doesn't mean either of us are wrong. I mean, obviously, we've both been profitable. I, I haven't lost this week yet. Uh, every yeah. day has been green, too. And so, you know, even though we have and different so, styles, we still make it work. Th this is why I wanted to get out also, guys. It's because I've seen a lot of times where I've been into what we call the 4-to-1 and the 5-to-1 profit and not taking that. 
And I've learned that that is actually a big incorrect thing to do because what ends up happening is this whole game is about probability. And when probability is going your way and you're not taking your reward, that's when you start destroying the probability in the system itself. So understand what you want to take as a reward, whether that be four to one, three to one, five to one, and then don't let it go below that. In this case, we were looking to risk about 30 cents, right? So we need to, at the very minimum, make closer towards that 90 cents. So we got there, we easily, that was 6420s. And so in the 6420s, 6428s, we can't let it go below that. Where was my last sell? Last executed sell there was 25 shares at 6424. And that's very important to me. I'm trying to keep to that three to one, that four to one, and that five to one. It's okay to let it extend, but not okay to let it go back down to one to one. Right. The quaffles. I hope you got the golden snitch on that red. <laughs> the golden snitch. Brady is coming to your the city. Bucks. He's coming to the like, Bucks, man. Bro, you don't understand. I was in Orlando for how many years? And now Brady wants to go to the Bucks? Yeah. Get out of here, man. He's going to go retire as a Buck. Doesn't matter. Breeze is going to rain down on him when they play him anyway. You know. No, I just feel bad for them because they don't even have that good of a team. Yeah. 100%. If, if I was him, personally, I'm going to the Colts. Uh. Indoors. Yeah. Good general manager. Yeah. You don't want to go good to good offensive line. You don't want to go to the Bengals, bro. You know, I heard they got the best stadium around, bro. <laughs> the Bengals. They'd have <laughs> no, to just... pay me. They'd have yeah. to pay me Burrow money. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's a that's a career killer going to the Bengals, bro. <laughs> uh, they still got an outdoor stadium, out, outdoor practice stadium. You can't even practice inside, man. That's how bad the Bengals are right now. Uh, they don't even care anymore. Yeah. The CVS, Walgreens, and Red have not stopped going up, man. Yeah. Had that idea. It came to me this morning. When I got my alert on my daily alert for Rad, I set an alert on a price target that I wanted to see break. Once I saw that, did my research, got the supporting news story, which was, hey, uh, consumers should be going to these stores making the purchases very early and in this quarter not necessarily next quarter this quarter right here so these stocks yes they're going down because the overall market but their business perspectives i think are actually looking good um and you know a little too late now but i hope you guys listen to me in in the morning and kind of did your own analysis on these stocks and were able to nail them on the upside all right, so I'm in CGC with, I think, 400 shares. I'm trying to take a little bit bigger sizing. Um, slowly going to scale into it down to about 1004. Uh, and so we'll see. Uh, I need the market to move up for this, obviously. And so I'm anticipating a possible bounce. But uh, we are getting some drops. Luckily, I'm roughly break even. And uh, like I said, I don't mind taking some swings today. I'm going to try to break the $2,000 profit level. And I have a big enough cushion to not be super worried, regardless of what happens. But I am in CGC. Uh, I am in CGC long. Uh, about break even right now on my account um, down about 30 bucks or so in the trade but again uh, this is right around where i want to be um, and w where i wanted to scale into and so we'll see what we get here but we got a market move up it should drag this one up hopefully um, Okay, so guys, those are not glitches. Those are out of the, the market orders. So you know how you always see market orders and you see like the exchange, you see NASDAQ, you see Edge. Do you guys see when you guys see those weird ones? Like let's say in my level two, it shows um, XS, XPSX or XCIS or NQBX those are what we call out of the market ordering so they're actually in a completely different market market Ooh. book 
And so when those sell, sometimes they create wicks because they're what we call arbitrage. The arbitrage seller takes it. And yes, it does create an imbalance right there, but Huge. it's an order that's been placed beforehand. Huge rip up on the S&P 500 and the SPY here, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm still holding CGC. I'm up about 15 bucks. Uh, I don't mind so, just letting uh, this work and letting this test a little bit here. Uh, we'll see what happens, but we are getting a move up on both the S&P 500 and the SPY. Um, I'm just looking for that <laughs> bid price to get a little bit higher. So 16% uh, move out the gates today on that call on RAD. There's 18s. Boom. I'm going to take half here. Let me sell. There we go. So it's half. Uh, still holding 200. Uh, up about 55 on the day. We're going to look to see what else we can get. I'll probably hold the rest, see if we get a nice move up here. I'm hoping the spy doesn't get rejected here, though. That's the biggest thing I'm, I'm kind of worried about. Um, and so we're going to wait, but... I'm gonna sell the last bit here. I'm gonna sell half and then I'm gonna hold 100 shares left. I just try to let this last little 100 shares work because I'm seeing some uh, resistance there on the S&P at 24, 24.50. Yeah, exactly what I was talking about, Nathan. There was one order that goes through on that extreme wick and it actually causes it. What's up, Hero? What's up, man? Uh, a little bit of a pullback. We'll see what the market does, but uh, this is why I sold most of my shares there. Okay. I'm seeing which one I like now. My short space. Big pullback here. Probably going to exit the last little bit here. Um, don't like that pullback. Yeah, there's the big drop, so I barely... Uh, avoided it. Oh, I'm still holding 50 shares. Great. Didn't mean to hold that. I guess I could hold it and let this last little 50 work, but didn't didn't want to hold that, unfortunately. Uh, wasted some money on commissions there. I'll give it a chance, see if it bounces, and then hold the 50 shares, but we're going to move on to other stuff now. Um, where am I at? I am at bounce up in the 60s here and I can short space watch for APT to get some pop here um, I've always noticed that APT has been moving against the market so the market started up today APT started down now the market's reversing a little bit so I'm gonna watch to see if I can get a pop in APT I, make sure you don't spam hero bro like i said i gave you a warning yesterday dude you do it again today i don't know man so just try not to spam bro aprn is back resumed and that one is up well up to over 11.99 i appreciate the sub king welcome to the team bro there's space already knocking down i'm not going to be able to get an entry on that one i'm gonna let it go look for a different one See it. Hey, green is good on that one, bro. That one kind of went nuts today, man. <laughs> it's exciting, man. Yeah, I don't trade it, but it went crazy today. <laughs> one that's uh, also moving well, at least a good range, and looks pretty measurable. Grub. That one's good to keep an eye on, guys, in this time. The Grub Hub. Yeah, man. I'm looking at AMD pulling back here. Market's pulling back. S&P broke the big support level down there at 2425s, and we are down to uh, we're at 2430. We are down to 2426s now, but that was a big support level uh, at 2420, 2430 roughly uh, in the S&P that we just broke under. So we'll we'll look to see what happens here. But 
I like Disney for a short possible. Next big level, I think, is at 2420s for the S&P 500. Uh, kind of looking at AMD. I don't hate it. Um, some support there might hold. Uh, it's just about where to set my risk, I guess, here. It makes sense. Uh, about a 16 cent risk if I get in at the VWAP. Uh, about a 20 cent risk if I get in above it. Um, big reward target, though, at least 40 cents for AMD. So it's good reward to risk. But you got to watch the S&P, see what we get here for that one specifically. Because that's the one that uh, is going to influence AMD a lot. Appreciate the sub, Anthony. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it, man. All right, I want to see if uh, Disney rejects one more time to get above here, 8820s. Uh, yeah, it's And I think the rat is hitting resistance there, hit the next resistance, which was 827. Let's see if it breaks out through that 830. Does look like the ABCD move. This would be the C probably the last major rip. It's Disney at those 8820s. Let's see if it holds it or if it just swings down through 88 after that. kind of thinking about longing AMD here with a small share size um, 50 shares at first uh, endless 50 shares we'll see though I think it's going to depend on what the market does but I just took a little position here um, we'll see what happens but appreciate the sub Elaine Elena I appreciate it welcome So we did get a break under the whole dollar in AMD. Um, like I said, I'm just going to keep this one small. What are out to short Disney at 8820s? And short Disney at 8820s if it gets back up there. I'll risk off of 8840s. Only doing 20 shares to limit my risk here. I like the risk and reward. And that's what I'm trying to attack here. Still about break even though. I don't mind Still trying to get here. filled here. Let's see if I get filled. I was really thinking about adding the other 50 shares down here. I'm watching it. I think it's going to depend on what the market does though. Just hope it can hold this upward trend. <laughs> I'm going to jump in with another 50. I'm in with 100 shares. Um, All right, guys. Just got short here. A little bit of Disney. Going to take profits very quick. There's a nice little spike up. Took half off there. Scalping into it. Um, nice little spike. Um, going to hold the rest. You know, try to make as much as I can with the rest. Just watching this, guys. It just popped through 43. Anything at 50, immediately get out. Just took another half At least off. for me. Short there. It's 47. 46. 50s. About to step out. 57s. Anything fail here? Yeah. Stepping out. That's why I did small risk there, guys. You see? Small risk, 
looking for a big reward. Saved me my risk there. Only lost $8. All right, so I jumped out of AMD. Uh, made a nice little gain there as well. Um, it should look good now. Let's see those bounces. Might be added to it on a pullback on AMD, but decided to get out there. Uh, that should be two thousand dollars. Yeah, so my account is at two thousand and ten dollars in profit. So I have effectively broken the two thousand dollar profit level. Um, after that trade, I'll take it. So yeah, finally oh. grown my account um, over two K. So it, it was a long process. Um, I've been trading kind of wimpy in this market, but uh, towards the the last few weeks, I've been pretty consistent. Uh, no losing days this week. Um, and I finally broke the $2,000 profit level. So we're just going to keep growing it, team. I'll probably try to get it up to, you know, three and then 5,000 if we can. Uh, now that I have $2,000 in profit, though, I'm also going to be able to start taking bigger sizing with some of my trades. I'm going to be able to trade larger, trade bigger, and, uh, you know, it should be, uh, it just should be more fun now that I can take probably some bigger sizing. Because really, I've been growing this thing mostly for in 300 shares or less. And so, uh, you know, we're just going to keep pushing. But there it is. You can see the buying power, two thousand and ten dollars, ten thousand, two thousand and eleven, roughly. But I'll take it. I appreciate it, Benny. Thank you, sir. What's up, boss? What's up? What's up, OS? Thanks, man. Spy is on a downtrend. So is AMD. How does it feel to be wrong? <laughs> nah, it's just a VWAP bounce, man. It's just the. It, AMD's on an uptrend, man. Um, if you look at AMD today specifically, is what I mean. It's intraday trend. Uh, it, it, it's maintaining above the VWAP. It's been above the VWAP all day. And so AMD actually hasn't been in an actual intraday downtrend all day today. Um, you know, even the SPY itself. Like, if you look at the SPY, SPY's been above the VWAP the entire day. So the SPY has been maintaining an upward trend if you exclude pre-market. The only reason the S&P 500 has been a little bit more sideways is because it doesn't have pre-market taken into the equation. But uh, most stocks today have been up and maintaining upward trends. Like almost every stock has moved up today except for a few exceptions. Uh, and again, you know, AMD is definitely one of the ones that follow it. Maybe I should have held on to a little bit here though. But uh, I'm just scalping today. Um, so I'll take it. Hey, I just broke it, bro. I did break it, man. I'm telling the truth. Hey, appreciate it, team. Yeah, it was a long road, man. I, I appreciate it. Congrats, John. Never fall below $2,000 or I'll cancel my membership. No pressure. That's right, Bailey. You know, sometimes I need that pressure. You know? Hey, but I appreciate it, team. Everything's up today, Tiny. It, on an intraday basis, we're up. You know? But it feels good, man. Broke the $2,000 profit level. Feels good, man. And that's no losing trades today. I think I had one losing trade yesterday. No losing trades today. Um, so I've been pretty accurate today with my scalps, at least. Um, and when the market's super volatile, it's really easy to scalp and bank some money. Um, the hard part is when the market's not volatile, hold back a little bit. That's the hardest part. We got 77 likes in here, guys. Overpower the haters. Hit that like button, team. Let's bring that number up to over 100 today. We need 23 likes to bring that number up to over 100. You know you want to. Even if you don't like me, you know, maybe I make you insecure watchers viewers out there if you don't like me hit that dislike button you know it's all engagement i appreciate all of it you know that's right cool road to 4k now really my goal is like 7k 8k but we'll see you know we'll see um 
slow slow progress. People think trading is like an instant thing. It's really not. It takes years to learn how to do it successfully. And I'm day traded. I'm, I'll put it this way. Almost all of my trading has been live. Like I've traded it all live. So like my entire journey of day trading has been live. Like people can go watch me when I was really terrible and they can see me when I put in green streaks and I grow as a trader. Same thing with Mitch for the most part. Uh, and so it's kind of proof that it takes a little bit to, to do it well. Hey, shout out to my man Isaac. One dollar donation. Thank you, sir. 2001. Thank you, sir. The new millennium. You know. I know. I appreciate it, Isaac. My man. Isaac with the donation. Isaac, how do you feel about Brady leaving the Patriots, bro? You know. Wait, you were the Brady fan, right? No, you were the Rams fan. Here's a here's a fun history lesson. Isaac and I made a bet last year on the Super Bowl. It was like exactly a, it was like a year and a half ago or a year and a month ago. Uh, and I think the bet went: if the Rams win, Isaac gets to call me Patrick for a week because back then people would mistakenly call me Patrick. And, and if the Rams won, Isaac would get to call me Patrick. Uh, and if if the Patriots won. I get to call Isaac Brady for a week, and I won. How much capital am I trading with? So I have a pro package. It's roughly $8,000. Uh, they give me a lot more buying power, but uh, it's roughly $8,000. So, you know, a $2,000 gain is about a 25% gain uh, in this account and, you know, slow and steady progress. Flip there in the spa. Yeah. It was the Saints and Rams. Oh. Rams this are better be than the Saints. How you feel about that? This could be pulling back towards the B-Web. Just be careful now, guys. Wait, you're telling me I don't get a Lambo in a huge house full of cash on the first week of day trading? Exactly. You know, it takes two weeks to get that. You gotta know that. Right. It takes two weeks, bro. Two weeks to get your, your mansion pass, you know, and they hand out mansions to day traders. Uh, you know. I'm gonna go get a bunch of prop money and make the fakest guru push video ever. I'm just gonna stand in front of a slang in it everywhere, you know. Telling people, do you wanna make a billion dollars? Buy my trading course. Yeah. No, but I would like to see those people saying, buy the dip still. By the dip. <laughs> That's our course name. By the dip. You know. Come on. We got 86 likes, guys. 86 likes. Shout out to the man that disliked us. Hey, we appreciate it. It's all engagement, bro. I appreciate it. You know. another buy opportunity maybe for amd i don't know if i want to i might just keep my 2k in profit and run but it's tempting man um the spy is still putting in you know we still got a really easy risk level in the spy itself and, and uh, amd's put pulling in a, a rebound bounce setup 
Yeah, man, I'm gonna keep a close eye on AMAT and APT, but uh, just really want to take a second here, guys. Um, I don't know you guys if you guys know already. Um, if you haven't already, definitely check out the platform that John and I use on these streams. This is how John and I definitely uh, continue making our money. You know, one of the great things is uh, is that these are a funded account programs that let us trade as much as we want with no PDT has a cheap commissions. I have the ability to short stocks like I did today. I was able to short Disney, make money on the plus side on QCOM. I think one of the great abilities that I have is that I'm able to go ahead and trade both sides. This is one of the great advantages of TradeNet. Um, one of the things they give you guys is also an access to the chat room, a demo account, and a legit trading course. All this for less than $400 is definitely uh, a great risk to reward you know there's too many traders out there trying to paper trade and continuously paper trade and then find their process to do that but what they end up finding is that when they go to live they can't handle the live emotions so the best way around that is to start small find find a package or a broker that can go ahead and help you use your strengths which is that low share size and working on that process because once you nail that process down it's only a matter about sizing up and taking the same execution so like always guys work on your strategy work on your process and find something that can support you that's why we support trade net and definitely check it out guys yeah for sure it's it's realistically it's the cheapest way to get started if you're new you know you're not going to get many other places where it's that cheap to get started and if you a lot of the time new traders end up having to risk thousands of dollars because that's what you need to be able to day trade this allows you to do it for 400 bucks essentially uh this you have to eat down here but you can't go upstairs and eat by yourself okay uh, but yeah it basically allows you to get started for 400 bucks which is unheard of you can day trade short stocks there's a lot of cool stuff um Huh? It doesn't matter. Here you go, buddy. Jack. I see you hiding, man. I see you. Yeah, come on. No, I bet. There he is. Making his making his daily appearance. Ah, man. Dang it, man. I was really thinking about AMD right here. I got it ready and everything. And then my son walked up. Ah, man. Should have took it. Uh, CGC might be a little bit safer option anyway. Let me see. I'd probably take small share size and CGC and be added to it. Market bounces here. I'm in with 200 shares of CGC. I think we're gonna get a surge here. I'm in with 400 now. I'm gonna go ahead and, and take the swing. Um, hopefully we get it. If not, uh, we'll figure it out. But yeah. Hey, thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. I try, you know, I try. Like I said, I don't mind taking some bigger swings. Um, spot moving up. I'm gonna add one more lot here on CGC. Uh, and then, you know, hold the last little bit. We'll look for Rad to pull back to 17 or 17.10. And I'd like to attack that one. Matt coming around, looking like it wants to break out. Let's see what happens here. There's 
16s. All right, here's the spy pushing up. If we get a quick move in here where I can take some profits very quick here, I'll take it. Uh, I need up a little bit more. We're at a good level, but I need that bid price to head on up. There we go. I took half off there, most of it. Uh, holding 200 shares left in CGC, and really, like I like I did yesterday, I'm pairs trading the S&P with the overall uh, with with other stocks, and then I'm using that direction to determine where my scalp direction is going to be. Um, and so, uh, getting better, getting up here, up $84, $83 in the day. I'm gonna hold these last little 200 shares left, close to break even, and uh, you know we'll see what we get, but. Looking okay. The spy moves up. Uh, it should really positively affect my trade here as well. If the spy continues up here, um, you just need that bid price to move up a little bit more. All right, looking for a ride here on this pullback. There's 19s, 18s. I'm gonna take to half get under no need seventeen eleven. You're good. All right, All right so I'm, I took a, another half off, and I'm just gonna hold this last hundred shares, um, just because I could see a potential pullback coming, and uh, you know we do have some resistance here on the S and P, um, and so you know not bad. There you go. Here comes Rad. Looking to get underneath seventeen ten, and I'll take a shot. S&P's at that resistance to see if it breaks. That's what we really want to see is a break here. Not pull back. Oof. Got a big, big pullback and ride there. Got to be careful. I'm not, I'm not adding in here. here. I'm just going to get out the rest. Bank my profits. Uh, up about 80 bucks on the day. No losing trades today. I think I've had like four or five trades. Look at that. All green. No losses. I will take it. I will take it here. I'll put Mitch up. If I do take it now, I've lowered down the share size to 50 to really kind of minimize the risk. But I do see a potential of maybe coming back up there to 18. All right. uh, maybe I should have had a little bit. There goes the bounce in the overall S&P. It's going to bounce right here. Uh, yeah, TradeNet has an app. Uh, TradeNet has an app for Android users. For Android users, uh, no, uh, no, no iPhone app. And, and as a programmer, the reason they do that is because it's two different languages. Android is Java or React Native, and uh, Apple is Swift. So it's two different programming languages. But they do have an Android app if you have an Android. All right, let's see if this holds this bottom again, which is 80s. Then I can take a shot. The shot would be off of 69s or 60s. Limit the risk to like $10. All right, holding 80s. Let's see it, test it. Still hasn't tested 80. We're at 96 likes, guys. Uh, the disliker took his dislike away. 
So you see that? Yeah. Like, he, he realized he's like, hey, dude, they're going to get engagement. No, I can't dislike this because it really does. Like disliking actually benefits. It's all engagement. So it, they just look look at it as a whole, I, I think. Um, and so, yeah, you know, hey, hit that like button, guys. We need four more to hit 100. So, you know, we still got over 200 people in here. Hit that like button, team. Hit that subscribe button as well. We got a bunch of new subscribers today. So uh, appreciate the love, everybody. APT, man. I took my eye off of it for a second. A little frustrated. I took my eye off of it. Look at that thing up there now, the 1277s. Yeah, thing looks a big, like a rocket. Big pullback on the SPY or on the SP, uh, pulling back down to that previous support level. We're really in a sideways range here uh, for the last. Um, for the last 25 minutes or so, we've just been sideways up and down, up and down towards the support and resistance. Um, yep. So, we'll see what we get. The $80 gain today, I'll take it. Um, no losing trades. Just yeah, that APT could, be, APT could be getting really big, guys. So, I'm going to keep an eye on that one. But uh, The app's called TEFS, T-E-F-S. But yeah, if you want to use the same platform as us, you have to sign up for them first, and so uh, you would have to buy a package. Here's the link for that. Like, like I said, uh, a lot of benefits. If you're home, you don't have, and you want to get started day trading for cheap, I think this is the best option. Uh, if you don't go this route, a lot of the time you're going to end up having to risk thousands of dollars to be able to actively day trade, and a new trader is most of the time going to lose their account. And so I think this is the cheapest way. You can get started for three ninety nine. Uh, comes with the course demo account, access to their chat room, so you can practice on the demo account. Uh, and, and test strategies and stuff. Uh, and then once you're approved, you get a $14,000 funded account for $399. Uh, that $14,000 account, you can actively day trade in short stocks. And again, I think it's just the cheapest way for you to get started in the market. Uh, you're going to save money instead of risking thousands. Uh, you're going to risk 400 bucks, which is going to help. And, and you know, it really allows you to get used to trading a funded account, like a live account. Um, and so there's the link if you want to check that out here. Uh, yeah, buddy. Sonic Forces? Yeah. I don't think so, buddy. Uh, you have this game. What? I lost it. Okay, well, I'm not going to pay for it again, bud. I already paid for it. I'm not going to buy it again. It's too much. Right. 25,000 shares I'll, going through at 16.95 on Rad. It looks like a down move, though. The Spy is pulling back to VWAP, so I'm kind of worried about buying into this right now. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. Spy's breaking that big support level here at 2420. Uh, That's a big support level. We're at 2419s now. APT breaking out there. Now up there to the 1280s. Looks like it's going to break through the 13. Remember, this one got a surge to 15 when it does break out. So be careful with this one. All right, looking for one more pullback here towards the 80s or 70s. Now it's back up there to 98s, but I haven't gotten in yet. Also guys, if you want to use the same scanner as us, I'll post this link here. Um, allows you to do a lot of cool stuff, build your own strategies. You can see I even have a VWAP fade scanner that I use that notifies me when stocks cross over and under the VWAP. There's a lot of cool stuff that comes with trade ideas, super customizable, and you can use promo code BT15 and get 15% off. Help support our channel. There she goes, APT, 1330s. How long does it take you to get approved for the funded account? Um, uh, it depends. I think it varies. For me, I think it was usually like three days they would approve me. I, I just reach out to them and be like, hey, can I get my funded account login? And a lot of the time they would send it to me within a few days. Uh, for some people, though, they make them take the course. I think probably average is probably like a few days, um, just depending on what, what they make you do. Yeah, glad I called out APT earlier. This one's starting to be a rocket. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's a face mask company. Yeah, man. It's one of the things is with this one is you got to look when the volume comes in. This one moves very, very uh, kind of in a bearish manner until it gets volume. Once it gets volume, it really does spike. Yeah. You could look for a VWAP bounce play in this one down to 1250s. Risk would have to be off a of 1226. Rad really did look good there. But when it dropped in the 60s, it looked a little scary there. So I didn't take a buy. Sonic Forces is free on PlayStation right now. Free game of the month. I don't have a PlayStation, bro. Xbox for life, man. Halo. You know, Halo over everything. I, I did recently play the new Warzone Call of Duty. Um, and it's pretty fun. But look at Rad back there to VWAP. This is kind of the move that I was looking for, guys. I was looking for up there to 1750s, and then from here, 18. That gave me uh, entry and a look that was more than a dollar risk to reward. Those are the types of trades that I like to take 20, 30 cent risk. Look for that nice 60, 70, 80 cent reward, and you get a good, pretty much even a 30% win rate will still get you break even. 25, 30% win rate. All right, that might be it for me, guys. Not saying much, and I already missed my entry there in Rad, so I'm gonna listen to my rules and call it a day. Yeah, I'm probably gonna hang it up too. I'm over the 2K mark, and so I don't wanna give it back. Uh, I haven't lost that all today, and sometimes you gotta quit while you're on top. Um, so. Yep. No losing Would trades for me today. Um, up right around 80 bucks. Um, you know, my account is now at $2,026 in profit. And so I'm well into the profit now. Uh, and like I said, I'm going to start taking some bigger sizing. Um, now that my account has that cushion, like I have a pretty big cushion now to actually grow this account. Um, that's what I'm going to start doing now is just start, start taking some bigger sizing with it and continue trying to push and grow this thing up to as big as I can. Um, you know, we'll see what the market gives us. It's been a pretty good market for trading uh, the last few weeks. Uh, and so we'll see if the market keeps giving us some good stuff. Um, today, we actually had a nice green day, at least so far, but we are getting a pullback. Uh, if you look at the overall SPY itself now, um, you can see... Uh, the market or the S&P 500 is breaking below major support um, and uh, we are falling back down here so we'll see if the market follows suit we'll see what happens here we're still technically you know sideways I think on the day right now All right, so we'll see what happens um, like I said guys you want to use the same platform as us I'll post this link one more time uh, it's one of the cheapest ways you can get started uh, you get a $14,000 funded account once you're approved, and it only costs $400. You get a lot of other cool stuff with it. You get to actively day trade that account. No PDT rule and short. Uh, and so here's that link one more time, guys. Um, no, you can day trade as much as you want. Five to seven days is average. Yeah, about a week, I guess. It's been a while since uh, I had to buy one, so, you know. Um, but yeah, guys, good luck. Uh, I'll see you all a little bit later. Have a good day. Um, like I said, hit that subscribe button. We did break 100 likes, so I appreciate the love, guys. We got 107 likes in here. Um, and so I appreciate it. What's up, Scott? Later, brother. Uh, see you, Bailey. Uh, see you, Battelle. Sean. Jibbles. Too Fast. Kenny. Jay. Uh, Gideon. Isaac. Jack. Sean. Ray Ray. All right, team. Have a good day, guys. We'll see you all, all right, uh, team. tomorrow. All right, team. Have a great one.